on Monday. PFF ranked its best offensive play callers in the NFL. Number one. Big Red. Big Red. One of the best nicknames in the game. Andy Reid. Number two, Kellen Moore. Number three, Byron Leftwich. Number four, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, five, Matt LaFleur at six. Hmm. Say, it's safe to say that Eric Eager of PFF uh, got attacked like by eight million John Wicks on the internet. It was uh, people were coming fast and furious from every angle. Legitimate people, players. I saw, I mean, fans, cowboy fans called the guy an idiot. <laughs> I had, a, I saw a ton. I follow several, like, you know, I, I wouldn't, I don't even know comedians, just people that just do shit, but they're cowboy people. Yeah. And yeah. they, ha- they were pissed off. Scooter they were Magruder, offended. Scooter Magruder was yeah, pissed. Yeah. He was offended by putting Kellen Moore at number two. And I, 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 it's hard for me to blame him. And you and I, I would say, are Kellen Moore fans, like what he represents. And I'm rooting for his career to go places. I mean, it already has. I mean, he's Jerry Jones's right hand man, basically. But th- it's, it's offensive as a football fan to put him number two. Like, that's a joke. And I'd even argue, I mean, Byron Leftwich seems insane to put him at three. Honestly. Like, number one, set in stone, not arguable. He would have been there no matter what. Uh, and I guess Sean Payton would have been on this list. He's just no longer eligible because he's yeah. retired. <laughs> Probably for a long time, this list was Andy and Sean, one and two. Payton. Right? I, I'd even say, like, you know, where's Josh McDaniels? Yeah, I think Josh McDaniels is a top six play caller. Some, <laughs> yeah. so I talked to somebody the other day who told me they thought he was top three. Um. And there's a lot of metrics, but ultimately you guys, like you're trying to win. And regular season wins is not what we're talking about here, right? Putting up but, numbers but in the regular it, it, season is not what makes you a great offensive coordinator. How do you compare Andy, Kyle, Sean, and LaFleur to two guys that don't aren't head coaches? Like I'd argue, I'd argue that alone would give them the bump over, right? Yeah, I mean, I I, to me, if you've been a four-year – like Kyle Shanahan, when he was an offensive coordinator, probably would have been on this list, right, when he yes, was he working would've. for the Falcons. So I don't think not being a head coach should necessarily knock you down it. But, you know, I – Isn't it more impressive, though, when you are and you're having success? Well, yeah, it is. Guys? It is. But I think Kyle – like, Kyle might have been in the same spot. Hell, Kyle might have been one spot higher when he was the offensive coordinator. So I agree with you that it is. But I think on the basic level, you just go, all right, we go head to head. Who has the better play play caller today? Chiefs, Cowboys, who's got the better play caller? Cowboys, Niners, who's got the better play caller, right? And I think if you said Kellen Moore's the head coach or Kyle Shanahan's the OC, even in that scenario, I'd still have to have Kyle Shanahan ahead of both Kellen and Byron. Okay, let's let's take these six guys. And every team in the NFL, there's a draft. So like the draft order that just happened, Jags, Lions, Texans, and they it's a coaching draft and they're all free agents and it's all offensive guys. So none of the, you can't draft a defensive coach. It's, it starts with these guys and the other offensive coaches. I think it's fair to say Andy would just be the most easiest choice, right? He's done it the longest resume. He would go one. He might not, I mean, depending on who the GM was, you could justify taking another guy, but let's just say for argument's sake, he goes number one, right? You, you know, immediately you get a head coach, you get a play caller, his resume. There is no chance on God's green earth if you need an offensive play caller that Kellen Moore, or Byron Leftwich, like, the, listen, I would take Kyle over Sean, but if you if I had Sean, I wouldn't be mad. Like, one of those two guys is going number two, right? And then the other guy is going three. If you just gave all the GMs the choices, correct? Yeah. And I think Sean might go too. I think he probably would. Now, the one thing you'd argue if you draft third and took Shanahan, you'd be like, well, my guy's four and eight against Sean. He won six in a row before Sean beat him in the NFC Championship game. And McVay's won a Super Bowl. And you could absolutely argue who's Sean. four and eight? Kyle is, or I guess Sean is four, four and seven. Sorry, four and seven against Kyle. Gotcha. Does the, does this, does the four, I guess it's four being the NFC Championship game. Yeah. Gotcha. Which, you know, pretty big game. Big game. 
Big game. Kyle had won six straight. Kyle had been kicking game. his ass. Kyle been kicking his ass. <laughs> yeah. So I'm with you. Being a head coach does factor in and give you an advantage. But even if you broke it down, you said all you're just drafting court play callers. Let's say none of these guys get to be a head coach. You're just taking the play caller. You wouldn't take Kellen two, and you wouldn't take Byron Leftwich three. No. I mean, I, I, think, I, I think I think Lafleur would easily be chosen now with his resume and dealing with Aaron. But even just like implementing a run game. You would say their team on offense is very physical. He, he's proven he, to me, has the most questions between Sean and Kyle because now we've seen Kyle win with Jimmy, Sean won with Jared Goff. You know, LaFleur, and it's not his fault. You know, it's like looking back, that Packer job was pretty good, right? Yeah. Like, you, who, who gets to take over a job with Aaron Rodgers at 34 years old? Yeah, no, not many people do, but at the same Hackett time, with Russell, maybe we'll it's see. not all, just like Hackett with Russell. It's not automatic that it works. Now, I think with Aaron, Aaron is better than Russell. And right now, he's definitely better than Russell. Like, his peak is better and his current state is better. And his career is just better. But, you know, you could argue what Matt LaFleur did with Aaron, getting Aaron to buy in, is one of the most... Like, I can't teach you that skill, really. Right? I can kind of teach you the Shanahan offense. I can't... Most head coaches probably don't have the ability to be firm. Aaron, we're changing things. This is how we're doing it. But also, Aaron, I want to work with you. Just getting Aaron Rodgers on paper sounds amazing, but it it clearly is is a challenge. It's worth now. It pays off. It's work you should put in because you benefit from having him as your quarterback. Again, that's not a play caller thing, but I do think that's a pretty. Every time we have the conversation about, well, how good is Matt Lafleur really because he has Aaron. Yeah, well, the the stuff he did to get Aaron to buy in is a pretty unique coach quality that he should get credit for, even though we haven't gotten to see him without Aaron as his starting quarterback. Yeah. I, I, I think all three guys, and it's Andy's greatest quality, right? I mean, beside, like, the scheme and the coaching, but just he's great with players. I mean, it's like an elite skill. He's beloved by his players. I do think Kyle McVay clearly have that. And I think LaFleur, what he proved dealing with the weird shit with, with Aaron for 12 months, right? He wanted to quit. He wanted to retire. He hated Gudikins handling that whole situation. Then by the end, after Aaron won his second MVP, remember the night before the Super Bowl, and Aaron pointed at him how much, like, I appreciate you. It was like, yeah, that's pretty impressive to figure just to get that guy. Because you would say ultimately, like, dealing with Ramsey, dealing with Debo, probably easier than just – just ultimately than dealing with Aaron, you know, and he figured it out, which you and I bullshit a little bit before we came on. If we had to rank the three guys, how they would deal with Aaron. If I had to bet on one button heads with him the most, it would be Kyle. I think yes. it'd be a lock. That yes. <laughs> McVay would probably be just tailor made. They would get along. They'd figure it out. I maybe honestly, LaFleur, cause LaFleur is like a mixture of them both, right? He's this good looking guy, but he also also has like a little asshole to him. I saw you know, like the week before their mandatory minicamp. I think they had the worst attendance in the league. You know, just like even their versions of like Armsteads and Jimmy, nobody showed up. And it makes sense, right? Middle of nowhere, stars aren't showing up. The other veterans are like, fuck this, not voluntary. I'm staying wherever I'm living. And he was pissed. He's like, what's the point of this? Like, and in fairness, like he's investing his time. Where are his guys? What's going on? And he, I saw that like Nagler and some people were like he's losing it. <laughs> In fairness, like I don't even blame him. But like, it's, especially uh, you're so close to winning a championship, guys. It takes every little <laughs> ounce of us, right? I, it's a tricky situation. It's not the Niners are a massive brand, but being that, I mean, he's the head coach of like the equivalent of like Alabama football or something. Like just that, be the Green Bay Packers. Like it's not an easy job. No, no. McCarthy never would have lasted as long as he did if he didn't rattle off that Super Bowl like year four of his career, right? The last five years of McCarthy, even a couple of those were successful. It was like, well, but you, you bank that Super Bowl win gives you a little time, right? Gives you a lot of time, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Speaking of time, like Kellen Moore's part of this to me is Kellen Moore's been an offensive coordinator for three years. Uh, Byron Leftwich has been an offensive coordinator for three years. Um, So... Uh, you know, and Byron was the OC for an offensive head coach, right? With Bruce, Bruce is not exactly a hands-off guy. So 
this is a big year for Byron now getting the offense all truly all to himself. Although I'm not saying he wasn't the play caller. He was, but was it wasn't part of the room Same with Kellen. Bruce, same with Kellen. But what, what wasn't part of the rumors why uh, Bruce had to go is because like him and Brady would work all week and then he would get involved later in the week. Arians that is and like, yeah. oh, I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to do this. So let's well, not act like you, you know, for a fact it's Kyle McVay and LaFleur show. Andy kind of unique gives it off every once in a while, but at any moment it's Andy Reed's offense and Andy Reed's baby. Right. 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 Kellen, the same deal with McCarthy, right? McCarthy went into the lab for a year to just come back and let Kellen do whatever he wants. Well, Jerry told him you not Kellen Stan. We're paying Kellen like an associate head coach, Mike. So uh, get out of the way. I think it's, I think play callers are kind of like closers. You know, my theory on closers is always, I don't care what, a national person has to say about my team's closer. If I watch him every day, I don't care what the numbers say. Oh, he's got a two Oh two ERA and he's hasn't blown a save in three weeks. It's like, yeah, man, I'm the fan. I watch him every day. I know what it feels like when he comes out of that bullpen. Brian Wilson was terrifying and he was an all-star, but he was terrifying. Right. And I think play callers are kind of the same way. Like the fans know in the biggest moments, it, you can put up numbers over the course of 17 games. Do I really trust you? And that's not science. That's not, you know, all, th there are a million ways to measure things that matter. Numbers matter. But the idea that like Kellen Moore, Byron left, which could be ahead of these three guys that have done it repeatedly in massive games, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay specifically, and obviously Andy have gone toe to toe with some of the best defensive coordinators in the game repeatedly. Like, okay, we've played three times, we're going to do it again, who's made the adjustments? And those guys have proven repeatedly that they can fight in heavyweight fights. And Kellen Moore just has not proven that. Maybe he can, maybe he will, maybe he'll be a head coach soon and call him plays. But the idea that he's on that level with those guys based on how many big-time fights we've seen them in, I, I just I don't buy it. Well, guy, in a playoff game, as a favorite, D'Amico Ryans took him to the shed. Took him to the shed. If it wasn't for a Jimmy Garoppolo pick six... They struggled to score double-digit points there for a long time in that game. At home. At home. Yeah. At home is a favorite. When you have firepower, supposedly, right, CD, Amari, Schultz, who got franchised. I mean, they they, they have a high-priced offense. There's no – their quarterback makes $40 million. Say what you want. Like, he's been a Pro Bowl guy. And now, I mean, I don't put that all on – yeah, his physical limitations are his physical limitations, but – that game, like when it mattered the most, like at the end of the day, Matt LaFleur has only been an offensive coordinator for four seasons. The guy calling the plays. He had the one year in Tennessee and then three in Green Bay. Kyle McVay is now, he has five and then a couple years under Jay. But even that was like, you know, Jay was the offensive coordinator. So Jay, even I, I've heard, remember when Kyle went or McVay used to talk about like the stories with Schrager last year on his podcast. A lot of guys jumped into the podcast game over the last couple of years. Mc, but uh, McVay was like, I'm in for one year, now I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's coming back. I don't think so either. <laughs> he's, McVay's drunk somewhere on a beach. Uh, Kyle's been the offensive coordinator beside Andy by far the longest on that list. Yeah. So part of it's like, I've done it like multiple organizations with multiple different quarterbacks, running guys, pocket guys, stiff guys. Like, I, you've seen it all. But the the defensive guys have seen me several times too, right? That's the other part of it. Yeah. We've seen Byron and Kellen with one quarterback each, right? Basically. Yeah. Because Bruce in Arizona was always the play caller. Now, Byron, I think, was on his staff. I guess a Byron had like coach. an interim OC job one year. I, I, I do think it's going to be interesting to watch for the first true time, right? Him and Bowles. Like, it, it's going to be his baby with Tom. Yeah. But is it going to be hard for him to get a bunch of credit with Thomas? Brady? It will be. But, but in the end, like, Tom, despite his efforts isn't going to play forever. But when Tom retires, Byron's going to have a hell of a resume of having just coached in some big games against big time defenses. And um, I think we'll have a pretty good feel for him at that point in time, even without Tom. I'm more but, confident that Leftwich becomes a head coach before Kellen Moore. I, I wouldn't have said that a year ago, but I agree with you now. He almost became a head coach this year. Remember the Jags? Turned it down, yeah. Don't you feel that Leftwich more than likely is a head coach next year? I'd yeah, almost bet I mean, on him I, over D'Amico just on the fact that he's an offensive guy and a, I can and see a quarterback. Leftwich, it might be right that Leftwich, depending on what Tom does, if Tom's one and done or whatever, 
But Leftwich kind of might be in the Shanahan boat when Shanahan was a coordinator of, I get to pick my job, and if I don't like anything that's out there, I'm not going to take a job. Dolphins next year with Tom? Where does Mike go? Back to San Francisco? Well, well if, if he goes to Miami, my, Mike would be in trouble, right? Depending on how their season goes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I as crazy as it sounds, feels like there's a 50-50 chance Mike's one and done, depending on to, because of Tom. If Tom wants to play one year for Stephen Ross, he's going to go there, and he's going to get to pick his coach. And Stephen Ross has an unlimited amount of money. They'll pay Mike to go away. That place is not uh, Mr. Stability, right? No. I don't blame him for taking it. His money's guaranteed, but he better make the playoffs this year. <laughs> and I don't think he's going to, guy. Tyreek seems stable. <laughs> yeah, it's going well. So does Tua. <laughs> 